Hello, my name is Jeff Hoagland, and I'm joined here by Kent Ketter, and welcome to the diamond portion of our Scars of War, the Hex Set 6 Constructed Review. We're going to go ahead and uh, dive right in here with the uh, the shining diamond of this set, all puns intended, uh, Daughter of the Poet. Um, we have a two-cost, two-two with life drain that says, uh, whenever you gain a diamond threshold, target troop gets flight this turn. And as long as you have five diamond thresholds at the end of your turn, put target troop from your crypt into play. Diamond aggro, here we come. Yeah, uh, the most important part about this card, in my mind, is Second that line. not only that, this Sorry. is an this card is ardent. Oh, like this, whoa! This whoa. card, unlike like matriarch, is underworld, yeah. but like. You know, everything we need. Daughter, daughter, or bride of the damned is is neutral, just like Empress of Ice. And this this card oh. is ardent. She she fills a slot in your ardent crusader deck that flushes that out nicely. Um, you know, just even completely ignoring the last line of text that like generates infinite value sure. in the late game. Sure, this card is playable without that last line mm -hmm. of text. I feel like just like a two two life drain that like provides evasion at random to your troops sparingly throughout mm -hmm. the game. Like that's that's playable. So the floor on this card, fantastic. Like, fantastic. and then you get into you get into the late game, and all of a sudden your two drop is like you should answer this, or I'm gonna like flood the board and destroy you. Is this is huge. This almost makes this almost competes with Might Singer for like the ability. Well, no, Might Singer swings the game, but the, in the same vein, this is going to in itself um, take things over. It's yeah, the, it's, the a, the it's thing, a similar amount of inevitability. But it does it. It does it the turn it comes into play. Correct. Yep. So yep. they have to be able to react to it at instant speed. Yep. And if they can't, you're going to get, you know, your largest thing. Uh, what do you think of this coming into play? If there was with its life drain ability, I could see this being um, a defensive card in maybe a uh, more controlling strategy that is attempting to uh, bring creatures back from the crypt. Oh, definitely. I mean, like you got to remember Rutherford Banks is rotating out as a champion yes. here in standard. So yes, like, yes, this yes. is a card that could very easily slot into that kind of archetype. You might getting yep. back uh silver talon adjudicators in a more controlling shell um, in the, in the aggressive decks. You could, you could, I think uh diamond uh, Ruby Ardent's going to be a real deck. You getting back your heart of embers that they work so hard to kill or your crusaders mm -hmm. or your hero of legends, just like your must answer threat suddenly becoming two must answer threats. Like mm -hmm. that's huge. And is the, um, I, I I know this is out of order for our review, but the two drop uh, that it generates a shard, that is in that's blood, sapphire. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what ruby. You're I think to. okay. Um, oh, it well, generates a threshold. Yeah, threshold. Excuse me. It generates a threshold. Um, any any of the two drops that generate thresholds as well. Uh, I wonder, you know, where the applications come in for something like this. You know, oh. if they're already a good rate creature. Yep, um, Royal Herald, I believe, is still staying with us. That's the one that generates okay. a, a ruby, a diamond, or a sapphire threshold. So, you know, sure. could, be, could be very reasonable for sure. Yeah, yep, yep. But that's that's reaching a bit. So excited for this at its base level, removing the third line of text. Uh, third line of text comes into play, and it is a value fiesta. Doesn't kill Twilight Revenant, though. So <laughs> next up here, we have our <laughs> duo our dual dual race card for the Arden here is the Dawn Mesa Duo, a five oh, cost five. three three with mobilize and life drain. And this says oh. deploy, create a valor for each exhausted troop you control and put it into your hand. So mobilize is a new keyword with set six. It means that when as you play this card, you can exhaust a troop you control to reduce its cost by two. So that means you can play this card on curve as a two drop into this as a three drop. And that's that's pretty powerful. Um, the fact that it makes Valor based on your amount of exhausted troops mean that if you're mobilizing this card, you're always going to generate at least one Valor. So I think I think this card could be reasonable. Um, another thing that's important to note is that because it's a human and a Kyotl, both those racial shards have seen play in the Ardent deck so far. So this goes to enable one or both of those potentially if you're trying to play more than one racial shard. Yeah, uh... I also am interested to see where this applies uh, with the mills. 
um, or with those type effects where you can, you know, you're, you're needing to actively tap down creatures and the like, or sorry, oh, you're wanting to tap down creatures. The um, outpost. <laughs> yeah. Where you like, I'm sorry, outpost. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Where they let um, you, they let you exhaust a bunch of troops, something like that. Yeah. yeah I think the mills, the, that that might be a different cycle. I'm sorry, but um, yeah, the, the, just things like that or anything that requires a tap effect uh, Would that, is that how this would work when it came into play? The deploy effect would go um, onto the, uh, Nope. So remember when a trigger oh, like right. this doesn't target in hex, it automatically just resolves and doesn't use the chain. Correct. So you're going to need to have your things exhausted before you yep. put this out. Um, you can exhaust a card for the mobilize as part of playing this, but as soon as the center's play, it's going to see which troops are exhausted right. and create valors for you. Fantastic. Nice, simple, clean, overthinking it. But uh, 3x, 4x, I, I think it's like a 4x in most of those decks. I can't really see a downside because in, in a sense, they can chain into each other, right? Can mobilize make it cost zero? Uh, well, remember, you can, you, you can only mobilize once per instance of mobilization. So you can only make this card oh, cost three. Oh, that's right. Cost three. Okay. So yeah. um, this uh, card, though, it, it kind of competes with the same slot as Moonrise Elder. But again, a lot of these cards, you're like looking for cards that are just like super close to playable. And then the fact that they're another Ardent Troop for your Ardent Crusader, like pushes them into that state of playability as a one to two of in your deck. And again, Life Drain, not to be understated in a format where Ingus is still going to exist. Yep. 100%. And this will basically trade one contact of combat, one combat damage step for a Angus Trayer. Seems like a good rate. Uh, next up, we have a, a new really efficient piece of removal in Decree of Banishing. Just a two-cost constant that uh, voids target troop when it comes into play, and then uh, when it leaves, that voided troop comes back. So kind of a less flexible, but uh, easier to play and cheaper resource um, solitary exile. Um, depending on the context of like how many paw of Yezucans are seeing play, and how much constant removal is readily available. I expect this card to see some amount of play depending on how the format changes and pivots. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's really going to have to measure up compared to like uh, Pride's Fall and the other, you know, similar costed removal. Um, and like, you know, are, does Decree, is Decree needed to void lower cost things and the like? Yep. Yeah, uh, worth noting, again, we're talking about the Crusaders that are just like staples in the format. Like this gets around a, uh, you know, their death cry trigger. So it could be reasonable in that context too. Oh yeah, ab absolutely. Absolutely. I'm excited to have access to it, but I'm definitely aware of its downside. They did not, uh, they did not design this one with, uh, you know, a massive power upside in mind. So the next card here is one of those that this is really close to playable i'm not quite sure. i wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't see any constructed play but i also like if this ends up being a reasonable reserves card for against particular strategies i wouldn't be surprised either so holy reprisal a four cost with double diamond thresholds quick action says gain two health for each opposing attacking troop then each opposing champion sacrifices an attacking troop so this card kind of covers two two different ends of the spectrum against a deck that's going wide this will likely one for one them. It's going to get rid of their worst troop, obviously, but it gains you a lot of life against a deck that's gone wide against you, which is probably what you need. Um, against a deck that's attacking with just one really specific threat, this this kills that threat if they only have one important thing on the table. It gains you a small amount of life and kills the most important thing. At four resources, this this I wouldn't be too surprised, but like if there's a go wide aggressive deck in the format, I think this is plenty reasonable. Yeah. I, the only thing I would keep in mind is as the popular card uh, increases the ability to play around it, you know, becomes a little more, a little more obvious, but that in itself might be worth it. Um, you know, instead of them swinging with the whole team, uh, you know, you getting only a small, like a smaller swing, it, it's going to change some attack patterns, but yeah, it definitely a wait and see type thing. Interested to see where it goes. Uh, uh, when they, when they attack you with only their Twilight Reverend, they'll have to sacrifice that, though. So, yeah, yeah, thanks, it kills thanks, it! Thanks, thanks, <laughs> uh, Next up... Attack with two creatures. Next up, we have the Intrepid Conjurer, which is a one-cost 2-1 two, one for a single diamond threshold Ooh. that says, when this becomes Valorous, summon an Intrepid Conjurer. So, you know, this card is just, like, one-cost 2-1, two, one, like... That's fine. We're definitely like playing this in our Arden Crusader deck because like we like one power two ones and we like reasonable cards that like enable our ten different troop names. But the fact that like this card could like make more copies of itself is awesome. Yeah, I I'm looking at this when you line it up with uh, Don Mesa Don Mesa Duo. Uh, if you're already a 
diamond based aggressive strategy that's wanting to put you know multiple one and two drops on the field and then suddenly uh you get to play duo and you gather you know like three or four different copies of valorous or excuse me of valor in your hand yeah, um, i mean that like, just makes a conjurer for and every it, every valor and yeah imagine you go a conjurer on one and a two drop on two and a duel on three and make two valors and then the important yep. thing to note here this conjurer it puts the new conjurers into play so yes. like your turn no cost four, on the one shot. Yeah, your turn four is Valor my Conjurer, get another one, Valor my Conjurer, get another one, just like two resources, add five more power to the table at least, like probably more down the line. Like that's super reasonable. Isn't there also uh am I it Twilight Twilight Elder? Uh what's the there there is Moon, a Moonrise Elder, the one that makes a Valor free Jordan troop you control. Well, how yeah. about some Adrepid Conjurer? Yep, like, and, and not to go. mention, like, we could still put the Major Arden gem in that card, so, like, your Intrepid Conjurers go from 3-2s to 4-3s when they attack the following turn, just, like, it's, there's a lot of upside there, a lot a lot of mm -hmm. snowballing that you can, mm -hmm. you can put your opponent down with your one drop, which is huge, like, your one drop yeah. to let you pressure the control deck, but also snowball against other mid-range and troop decks is huge. Fantastic, I love the flexibility on this one, excited to see where it goes. Uh, next up, we have Martyred Saint, a 5-cost double diamond threshold requirement. An another Arden Troop. This one's a 5-5 five five with Steadfast, so, like, rate rate checks out, 5-5 five five for Steadfast, 5. Your other Arden Troops get 1-1 one one and have Steadfast. Never, never exhaust your troops while you're attacking. But here's here's where it gets better. Like, the, again, we evaluate this card as line, li stats, line of text number 1, line of text number 2, that's decent. Death Cry transform <laughs> this martyred saint into a saved soul. What? And what what does the saved soul do you ask? Well, the saved soul of course. After Wee. they're going to kill this guy to get rid of your anthem, but oh wait, he's still an anthem. The saved soul is a four cost double diamond threshold constant that says your ardent troops still have plus one plus one and steadfast. And then icing on the cake, when an ardent troop enters your hand, revert this. So so the next time you draw an ardent troop after they kill this, they have a very small window to get rid of this save soul before it's just back to a martyred saint again, beating them down. And the, the important thing to remember in Hex is that when cards transform, they're not affected by troop trauma, which means this, if this is a save soul at the start of your turn and you draw an ardent troop, your martyred saint can attack that turn. It's not, it can just like, just get right back down to beaten down so if they're going to kill your martyred saint they better be ready to kill the save soul as a follow-up right away just to, i i'm super excited to see how few ardent troops we could play in a deck and have martyred saint have massive applications for it one of one of the things that's also relevant here is this card um this card has five five toughness and one of the ruby cards we're going to look at later uh, it voids a troop that would die, but it only deals four points of damage, which means the answers to this are fewer than the answers to things like Crusaders for getting in terms of getting around this death cry trigger. That's going to be super annoying. Um, I'm excited to see where this one goes. Thankfully, thankfully, there is no life drain on this one. Correct. Yeah, so. just steadfast. So, uh, and again, we talked about that fifth point of toughness. This also dodges strangle, which we talked about okay. in the blood review. Like that's going to be staple removal. Huge. Like dod dodging those Huge. is great. Yep. Uh, next up, we have another card that has a related card. We have the Midnight <sighs> Gatherer. Is you know a... what it doesn't? Sorry, sorry. You know what it doesn't dodge though? Um, just a, a this is looping way back. But Bride plus Strangle is going like Bride's application with Strangle. Sure, but then it ends up as a safe soul. That's fine. I, absolutely. But I was sorry. I was just thinking Strangle Bride on five toughness creatures. Just yep. the the sorry. Yep. The... Yep. <sighs> Makes, gotcha. makes me very happy, small things. Go ahead. Better cards to talk about. So the Midnight Gatherer <laughs> here is a 1-1 one, one with Flight for 2 and a single diamond threshold that has the Diligence ability. So that means when you ready this, you get to do one of these two things, and you pick. You either put a random resource from your deck into your hand or transform this Midnight Gatherer into mm. the Stroke of Midnight. As I put the wrong card up there. Next. So Stroke of Midnight Next. is a 4-cost with life drain, flight, and steadfast, that is plus one, plus one for each different threshold you control. So if you're at least a tri shard deck, just like this, this, this two cost one one that draws you a resource every turn until you don't need it to draw you a resource, that's great. And like the flight on these diligence troops cannot be understated how important that is. Like being able to consistently attack with a form of evasion to allow you to ready them is awesome. I'm super excited for this in 
Like, I, I even though it says random resource, I, there's just, it doesn't matter what it is. That's two cards a turn. Correct. Just, yep. Right, right there. Just not, I could, I could not even have the ability to form this into a literal game changing card. Yep. But. And like the fact that your resources are giving you charges means even in the mid to late game, like if you just want to thin your deck and like generate charges every turn, like that's still relevant. And when you're playing against an aggressive deck, you can pivot into the stroke of midnight and like you have this steadfast life draining troop that gets to attack every turn because there's evasion still. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this will also help with the, by getting all the extra resources and the like. Um, do we still, we still have Uzu? Uh, yep, Uzu still legal. Uh, I believe Lixel has rotated though. So okay, okay. Um, Uzu just seems interesting with the ability to take the resource, generate a charge, generate the charge for some of our other yep. uh, things that's, like that's daughter of the Uzu. Uzu like, can turn this into a five 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 as a stroke of midnight. Just, so. Yeah, with without even having to touch, uh, you know, those last two shards as as actual uh, resources in your deck. Uh, sliding law here, we have the. Totemic Elder here, a 5 cost, 4-4, four, four, with a minor socket and a double diamond threshold requirement. On Death Cry, so when this dies, Conscript and Ardent Troop with 3 cost, Conscript and Ardent Troop with 2 cost, Conscript and Ardent Troop with 1 cost, and then all of the created cards get the socketed powers of this. So, what your socketed just... powers are... Actually, you know what, this, this card... God, th I cannot wait to build Diamond Ruby decks in this format. Um... You can put Make a Valor in this. And then you get three troops, random troops that make Valors when it dies. And then our intrepid conjurers get to chain and off. Then you're intrep and then your intrepid or you have a heart of embers or just like like pick pick your poison. You just like hashtag YOLO360, just like Valors, Valors for everyone. <laughs> this this guy is just like the Oprah of Valors in the Diamond Ruby deck. And I just this is a value troop. And we don't care if this one dies to strangle because he makes three bodies when he dies to strangle. But it mm. is worth noting that he does he does get hosed by the ruby action that that voids a troop. But I still think this card is great. I but, think I'll be very surprised if this doesn't find a slot as one of your one ofs to support your Arden Crusader. Is the ruby action a quick? It is a quick action. Okay, so I mean, if you can sneak this in on the six, not into their open. Oh man, yeah, in the valor. Yep. It. Just yep. Boop. But yeah. <laughs> Things to think about. Yeah, I think this card is super reasonable. It's just like I, I love me some value, and this, and th this card says draw three, and those three can like you draw like half a card each with the valor. So like, sign me up. Yeah, at a at a at a minimum, you're going to be playing this in your said Crusader deck, and uh, just well, here's my one of that drew me three. Well, darn. Yep. Oh jeez, just typings. And that concludes our diamond set review again my name is jeff hoagland i'm here with kent ketter if you need to buy any set six or any other hex cards you can do so on hexprimal.com and you can check out with that code jeff5 that'll get you that five percent discount on there be sure to hang out and stick around for the rest of our scars of war set review here on youtube we'll catch you around folks we'll be right back don't go anywhere